Hey guys, Matt from Eastwood. We're here in my home garage. We're gonna do a quick little tech talk today about TIG welding filler rod. Filler rod is something that is very important when you are learning how to TIG weld and understand what filler rod to choose, uh, what the different filler rods are, the uh, diameter of filler rod, and a number of other things that you want to consider when you are welding something with your TIG welder. So we're gonna do a quick rundown of some things that you need to know if you're just starting out with TIG welding and trying to figure out what filler rod to choose. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing to consider when you're choosing a TIG welding filler rod is the diameter of the rod that you're using. So once you've already picked, you know, you've determined what type of material you're welding and you have a filler rod that matches that, you wanna pick a diameter that is the correct diameter for what you're welding. So uh, for instance, here I have two pieces of filler rod that are both uh, ER70S-2 that are for mild, generally for mild steel welding and these are like the most common I use. So I have an 045 here which is uh, really thin, you can bend it really easily and then I have 332 here which is much thicker um, and substantial. So even though it may seem like you're using a lot of filler rod if you're welding sheet metal or something like that, that doesn't mean that you need to jump up to 332 if you're welding like thin sheet metal. So uh, a good rule of thumb, if possible in a perfect world, air quotes, uh, is to pick uh, a filler rod that matches the, the the thickness of the material that you're welding as close as possible. So if you're doing sheet metal and you're doing a butt weld and it is 18 or 20 gauge, you try you want to try and get fairly close to the same thickness so that when you're welding, you're not burning away the base material with the heat uh, to melt your filler rod. So if we try to use this 332nd filler rod on sheet metal, it's gonna take a lot more heat, probably two to three times the heat to melt this filler rod and actually get it to flow out into the weld seam than it is to actually melt your 18 or 20 gauge steel. What's gonna happen is you're gonna heat up the material, cause additional uh, distortion or, or warping, or you're just gonna blow the material away and you're gonna create big craters and holes, which are very frustrating, especially if you're a beginner. And already with a butt weld, you're already gonna be fighting that because the edges of the material are just a fraction thinner than you know the rest of the material from cutting and sanding and everything. So make sure you're choosing a, a filler rod thickness that is correct. If you're doing, for a rule of thumb, if you're doing structural type welding like on a chassis work or things like that where you're gonna be welding heavier materials and by heavier I mean anything that's over, uh, that's like 14 or 14 gauge or eighth inch and thicker, you're gonna be going up to like a 332nd. Now I, uh, once you get into that level, there may be some personal preferences as you get a little more experienced with TIG welding where you may choose a 1 16th rod over a 332nd because you like to actually uh, feed more filler rod as you go rather than doing uh, you know larger uh, drops of filler rod less often. So that gets into a personal preference thing, but as a rule of thumb, when you get into the thicker stuff like over eighth inch, you're gonna be using the 332nd. You'll use the 1 16th for things below that where you get into 14 gauge, eighth inch even, I use it for, and a little thinner. Uh, occasionally I will use 1 16th for sheet metal type work, but that is basically if you're just filling up a hole, like if you're doing a plug weld or something like that, uh, I will use that for, uh, for filling a plug weld or a, a a defect in a, in a weld seam, you can use that to fill it, but it is not something I would use for a whole entire long weld seam on a quarter panel or something. I'd go down to 045, 035, and even some instances I've run some wire off of my MIG welder and used like 030 or 023 to weld some stuff that's really intricate. But as a rule of thumb, just use that when you're choosing your filler rod when you're doing heavier fabrication, and that will kind of just get you in the ballpark when you're going, and you can go up or down on your filler rod. As long as you have a good selection of filler rod like I have here on my welder, you can kind of jump around and pick the filler rod that suits the job the best uh, that you can. All right, so next thing to talk about is the type of filler rod that you're using when you're welding. There is an endless discussion that could go on into the type of filler rod and when to use it and what to use it for. Uh, a lot of that can be found in some actual welding 
manuals or if you're looking to get certified, a lot of that is taught. Um, but for us average guys that are welding in the shop or, or DIY guys, uh, I wanted to go over some of the basics for that. You can get kind of the filler rod that you need to do most of the automotive or home hobby type repairs that you're doing with a TIG welder can be covered with a lot of this rod. So pretty much all of the filler rod that you get, no matter where you get it from, whether it's from Eastwood or from your local welding supply store, it's going to have right on the tube a either written out what type of filler rod it is, like this one I have here is uh, Eastwood's uh, it's 1 16th silicon bronze rod. Uh, I have some um, 308L or 308 uh, stainless rod here. I have ER70S-2 that's for uh, mild steel. Uh, I usually keep 4000 series uh, aluminum rod on hand. And basically those different things, you, you just need to know number one, what type of material as, as a general rule of thumb, what type of material are you welding? Is it aluminum? Is it mild steel? Is it stainless steel? Is it something you know else in the, uh, the other field? Uh, once you, you I understand understand what that is, then you can try and pick the best rod that you're going to be used. So most commonly what I have here on my cart is kind of like a universal rod that works on most things and gets most automotive work done. So that's what I keep. So the, 3, 000, um, the 300 series stainless rod uh, works really well and the different numbers you will see on some of these, there's like a 300 series, a 500 series stainless rod. Basically those numbers change by the amount of silicon or magnesium that is actually in the filler rod and that will change the number and also will change its properties, how it reacts and what type of material or where you would want to use that. So definitely if you're doing something that's a little high end where you want to uh, be forming the metal after you weld it or it's something that's going to be exposed to high heat or maybe it's something that is a mixture of metals like a cast uh, type part that you're repairing, you may want to do a little more research into what's rod because just the difference in the number may change how it welds, uh, if it's going to crack after it welds, if you need to preheat it, different things like that. But like I said, for most fabrication and automotive use, uh, I keep the 300 series um, stainless rod, the ER70S-2, and the 4000 series aluminum rod on hand. And that works for most stuff, most. But again, if you're doing something that's kind of uh, a little different or out of the norm. You definitely want to research that before you start doing it. Um, the silicon bronze rod is kind of, it's basically like brazing with a TIG, so it can be used for a bunch of things, but it's not really a structural um, rod that you're going to be using. You're going to be using it to, to actually braze dissimilar metals together for something that is a visual where you want to fill some pits or things like that before chroming uh, or, or different things like that before body work, you can use this. Uh, so there's a lot of uses for that, but just educate yourself on what it's used for and kind of where the extent of what it can be used for is. You know, in silicon bronze, again, I wouldn't be using this for chassis fabrication where I want to be welding a front cross member into a frame or doing a four link. You're not using this. You're going to be using like your ER70S-2 if it's steel uh, because that can be used for structural type welding. So make sure you're checking those numbers. A lot of the filler ride will give you a breakdown or a Cliff Notes version right on it of what it is or at least will tell you what it is. And when you go to purchase it like on Eastwood website, we're going to give you a little bit of information about what, where or why you're going to use that and that will kind of give you an idea. But these are the rods that I keep on my car for automotive restoration and fabrication and they handle 99% of the jobs but again, do some research, uh, you can look it up online, there's a lot of great resources where you can look it up and find out what each of these numbers will give you as far as doing small little changes to the type of uh, material that you're welding and the results that you're going to get with it. All right, so the last tip is to make sure that you're choosing filler rod that is actually made for TIG welding. You can get some rod that is made for different types of welding or filler wire that is made for different types of welding, but generally that wire is made for those different types of welding and it may not react how you want it to when using a TIG welder. So the old days of using a uh, coat hanger to weld with a gas torch, those are gone. TIG welding, you can't get away, away with that and the type of welding that it causes would actually just melt and uh, cause a lot of contamination in, in the weld. So you need to be choosing actual filler rod that is made for TIG welding and uh, when you're doing that, you can get that from any reputable source that sells uh, welding supplies, like I said, at Eastwood.com you can get filler rod, you can get it at your local welding supply store, and uh, you know that that filler rod is actually uh, 
designed and engineered to be used with TIG welding. Uh, there are some other rods out there that are made for doing like low heat, like soldering and things like that where you're using an open flame. If you try to use that with a TIG, again, you may not get the best results. You're gonna probably get a porous weld because they are made for a different type of soldering, welding, brazing, things like that, and it will not work with TIG welding. So make sure you're getting filler rod that's actually for TIG welding, and you should be ahead of the game when you actually start choosing your filler rod and beginning to weld. All right, so that's my quick crash course on choosing filler rod if you're learning how to TIG weld. Now again, this is not the end all for all types of TIG welding and filler rod, but we wanted to just dive in and kind of show you guys exactly what you need to know if you're learning how to do TIG welding, especially if you're getting into automotive restoration, fabrication, customization. This is the filler rods and the stuff that you need to know and the mistakes that we often see when we have people buying TIG welders for the first time and calling into our tech lines and asking questions. A lot of this stuff is the questions and the answers that we give. So hopefully this will help you out. Help you out. Now again, uh, as you get into this, you're going to be honing your skills. You're gonna learn a lot more about your preferences for filler rod and what you like to use for diameter and types of filler rod. But these general rules of thumbs that I've gave in this video should give you a jump start if you're learning how to TIG weld. If you wanna learn more about all of the TIG welding supplies and welders that we offer, you can visit the link down below or you can visit eastwood.com to get all the tools you need to do the job right. Thanks guys guys. Catch you later.